You know, what's the point of living if you don't have a dick? Donnie Darko is a sci-fi mystery thriller directed by Richard Kelly and released in 2001. Its runtime is almost two hours and it relies heavily on the spectacular acting from Jake Gyllenhaal, who plays the protagonist. Its synopsis is as follows. After narrowly escaping a bizarre accident, a troubled teenager is plagued by visions of a large bunny rabbit that manipulates him to commit a series of crimes. So why is it that a narrative that seemingly has nothing to do with queer identity can become an allegory for the trans experience? Upon re-watching the film, I have gathered evidence on how the story of a troubled societal outcast can encapsulate what it can mean to be transgender. Queer readings. What are they? Who is behind their history? And what can queer readings mean to someone who is queer? As audience members, we read and interpret every piece of media we encounter. So, to put it simply, Taking a queer reading of a text allows audiences to see the possibility for queerness in media that does not explicitly name LGBTQ plus identities. Some famous examples of this are Sherlock and John from the TV show Sherlock, Finn and Poe from the Star Wars sequels, and Becca and Chloe from the Pitch Perfect trilogy. At the heart of this theory came Michael Foucault and Judith Butler, who likely understood that due to the historical lack of queer representation, we must create our own. Donnie Darko takes place in 1988 and was released, as previously mentioned, in 2001, at a time where trans representation was almost unheard of. Its most prevalent themes are isolation, loneliness and purpose, or lack of. Throughout the entirety of the film, Donnie is shown to be quite dissociative and depressed. His eyes appear tired and he rarely smiles. It is easy to draw the assumption that he has lived a lonely life and that he does not fit in with his current group of friends. Go back to China, bitch. <laughs> Just leave her alone. In one scene, two men are shown to laugh at Donnie, mocking his weirdness, his sleepwalking. I guess he was sleep golfing. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for that drool spot. <laughs> In the case of this film, Donnie's hallucinations and sleepwalking are what differentiates him from his peers. He is looked down upon for them and made to seek help for them. Sound familiar? This, of course, relates to the many lived experiences of trans people, who are often societal outcasts, rejected or bullied by their peers, closing off any opportunity to make friends. Due to these often harsh and harmful experiences, trans people are very rarely truly seen. Not just for who they are, but as people too. People with hopes and dreams and fears. This is highlighted perfectly through Donnie in this scene. I want to be a writer, or maybe a painter, I don't know, maybe both. Then maybe people understand me. I don't know, change names. And I think this also ties into what queer reading can bring to people. Queer readers often label characters to help them understand themselves. Coming away from theme now, and when looking for specific evidence of underlying transness in Donnie Darko, I found plenty. One example I'd like to highlight in particular is when Donnie is attacked and threatened in his school bathroom. Although this plot point has nothing to do with transness, I think this is a universal fear for trans people, to be attacked in the bathroom. There's a very touching scene at about 1 hour and 30 minutes into the film where Donnie confides in his father. What he says and how he phrases it could be interpreted as a dad showing support for his trans son. Whatever happens to you, be honest, tell the truth. Even if they do look at you funny, they will. In one scene, the main antagonist confronts Donnie. Why are you wearing that stupid man suit? And this scene stood out to me because it suggests that Donnie's manhood is not real or authentic. It is a mask that Frank sees right through, and that is the sad truth of being trans. If the wrong person finds out about our suit, they hold power over us. The film's ending explores Donnie's realisation that he must be a sacrifice in order to save the rest of the world. In his final letter, which I believe is meant for the audience too, 
He says this. I hope that when the world comes to an end, I can breathe a sigh of relief because there will be so much to look forward to. And he is shown to be quite accepting of this death. <laughs> To me, this segment of the film reveals a lot about Donnie and the future that he saw for himself. It appears that he almost expected this, that his very worst fear of being and dying alone has come true. I don't want to be alone. Must this be true for trans people too? Must we live and die a life of isolation because that is what is expected and encouraged by a large portion of society? Must our fate be death? a sacrifice, a statistic. I will leave you with those questions, but I hope that you find the courage to say no. You deserve to live your life beautifully and authentically. Well, it reminds you how beautiful the world can be. Yeah.